diagram is a visual representation of data that describe how data is related to each other. An entity can be anything. It can be object, name or a place. It can be anything. In the ordinality, we will be checking for the minimum number of relationship. In the specialization, a group of entities are divided into subgroup which is based on their characteristics. So, it is a process when relation between two entities is treated as a single entity. Hello everybody, a warm welcome to Anandol. I welcome you all back to the session 5 and chapter 13 that is database concepts. I am Rohini TS, lecturer, Department of Computer Science, Vidya Shram Pre University College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In the previous session of this chapter, we have discussed regarding the 13 rules of the EF code that is related to what? Codes rule. And also we have discussed regarding the normalization. What do you mean by normalization and what are the types of normalization we have? So it includes first normal form and also it includes the second normal form and it has third normal form or a 3 nf so we will be continuing with a bc nf that is boys and called normalization form so in our today's session we will be discussing about the boys and called normalization form in short bc nf and also we have a entity relational diagram so in short it will be considered as a year diagram and also we have going to learn with a types of relationships so among that binary relationship is important then we will be learning about what do you mean by cardinality generalization specialization as well as aggregation. So these are the topics that we are going to learn in a today's session. Now let me get into the first topic that is related to BCNF. Already we have discussed regarding one or first normalization form, second normalization form and even third normalization form. So if I am, uh, wanted to talk about this uh, BCNF or if you wanted to learn about this BCNF or a boys and cord normal form, it is just a higher version of the 3NF or a third normal form. So BCNF is a a higher version of the third normal form. So this form deals with a certain types of anomaly that is not handled by 3NF. So whatever the situations or whatever the criteria anomalies that we have in the third normal form which cannot be handled in that particular normalization form that can be handled with this BCNF. So then when I can say this BCNF uh, is in any of the relationship is in BCNF only a 3NF table which does not have any multiple overlapping candidate keys is said to be in BCNF. So when I can say so when a third normal form or a third normal form table or a relationship which does not have any multiple candidate key that should not be overlapped to each other. Then I can say that particular table is in BCNF and also it will going to be work with a concept called determinant. Then what do you mean by determinant here? Determinants are nothing but it can be any attribute. If I say attribute that specify a characteristics. So that can be simple attribute or a composite attribute on which some other attribute is fully functionally dependent. If I'm saying any of the attribute. So that attribute should be on which some other attribute is fully dependent functionally. If I take this as an attribute, if I take this as an another attribute at that time, so this attribute on this attribute, another attribute should functionally dependent on it. Then only I can say that as a determinant and this BCNF is also based on the determinant concept. And also a relation is in BCNF if and only if every determinant is a candidate key. When I can say this uh, any of the relation or a table is in BCNF and only if the determinant is a candidate key. Then only we will be calling that is in the BCNF or a boys and cord normal form. This is regarding BCNF. We'll see the next concept that is ER diagram or an entity relational diagram. So till now we have discussed regarding what do you mean by table, what is the content it has, what is data and what is the relationship between one data to another data. What if I'm representing everything with a diagrammatic representation or a visual representation then that will be considered as what? Yard diagram. So that yard diagram is a visual representation of data that describe how data is related to each other. So if I say this as a yard diagram, 
that includes a visual representation of what do you mean by data and how one data is related to another data. For example, if I say database, that is not only considering a single database or uh, it not only considered with a single table and each table will going to have its own attributes, records and all. Then how can I relate one data to another data? So if you just imagine the complete database management system that includes number of database, that particular database has number of table and number of tables has number of fields and records. So how one data is representing, how one data is relating to each other, everything we are representing it visually then that will be termed as what ER diagram or an entity relation diagram and also it has three components in it that includes entity attribute and relationship we'll see about the entity now so if i say an entity that can be anything for example can i consider this as an entity obviously so if it has a characteristics then we can say it as an entity can i take this digital one as an entity yes so if it is having any of the characteristics or attribute then i can consider this as an entity so that an entity can be anything it can be object name or a place it can be anything so that an entity can be any object place person or even any of the class that is a collection of objects so that if you consider the ER diagram how we are going to represent the entity then so that can be represented with the help of rectangle so you can see here teacher is an entity student is an entity if I take a college as an entity then that needs to be represented with the help of this rectangle so then we are going to call that as an entity so rectangles are named with an entity set that represent whatever we are going to write within that uh, rectangle will be considered as a entity so if i take uh, so vidyashram pu college so at that time if i write within this rectangle then this is also considered as what one of the entity then what is attribute an attribute is nothing but it describes a property or characteristics of an entity so if i say an entity that will going to be represented with the help of rectangle that can be anything and what if i wanted to represent its characteristics if i say student what are the characteristics they are going to have a student id they are going to have a name age will be there phone number will be there academics will be there so they are belongs to particular college so that is what their attribute their characteristics of an entity that represents the attribute so that an attribute describes a property or characteristics of an entity then how we are going to represent an attribute so an attributes are represented by a means of eclipse so if i consider a student student will going to have a roll number student will going to have a name and their birth date will be there and they may contains phone number right and they are belongs to particular college so these are the attributes of a student if i take an example of employee so what employee consists of so employees an entity here so employee consists of employee id will be there and also he is going to have a name employee name will be there their experience so these are the sum of the attributes of an entity called employee and also every eclipse represent one attribute and is directly connected to its entity so if i represent any of the attribute here that will directly going to be connected to this entity if i take a student as an entity it has three attributes one is name birth date and roll number so if i take a phone number that will one more attribute of a student entity if i take a college that will be one more attribute of a student entity this is regarding attribute and entity what we have at last that is relationship so that we are representing a relationship how the data is connected to another data for that purpose we have this relationship so that a relationship type is a meaningful association between entity types so here we are building a meaningful relationship or we are building a meaningful association between one entity to 
another entity and each entity can have any number of attribute how one entity is related to another entity that we are showing the association between those two entity or any number of entity and also relationship is represented using diamond shaped box how we are going to represent a relationship here with the help of diamond box this shows the relationship between one entity to another entity if i take a student as one entity and if i take college as one more entity so this relationship will going to shows that means how student is related to college student will going to be enroll or it, they are going to be admitted to particular college and that college can have college id and college can have college name and uh, it includes address of a college and courses they have offered right so all these are the attribute of a college entity if i take a student then they are going to have a student id so they will be having student name let me consider s name and age or date of birth will be there their locations or address will be there so all these are the attributes of a student entity and this shows the relationship between one entity to another entity student enrolls for a college so that means what is the relationship between student entity and college entity here they are enrolled they are got admitted to particular college that is what the relationship or association between student entity to college entity and also in the er diagram this relationship types are represented on the er diagram by a series of lines so here i have draw a line between student entity to college entity that shows the relationship between one entity to another entity then what are the types types of relationship we have in a er diagram entity relationship we'll see it includes binary relationship rec recursive and it has a ternary relationship we'll see about the binary relationship now so when it comes to the binary relationship that means it is a relation between two entity as the name indicates binary is nothing but two so if you are building association between two entities then that will be termed as binary relationship again it is uh, further classified into one to one one to many and many to many so we'll see about the one to one first so what is this as the name indicates one to one so if a relationship if a relationship between the two entities is one to one that is what this type of relationship is rarely seen in the real world but somehow that is uh, not so true so we can see many examples that is one to one in a relationship so that if you consider this relationship or if you consider this diagram here you can see that here one entity and here also one entity and with the help of this diamond box uh, we can specify the relationship and this line specifies a connectivity between one entity to another entity so this entity can have any number of attributes so if it is uh, showing a cardinality ratio 1 is to 1 that means a particular entity 1 is related to entity 2 how 1 to 1 if you consider this student is going to enroll to course so what it indicates one student is enrolling to one course at a time one student can enroll to one course at a time so that is one to one relationship what about one to many so here you can see here one entity can have a relationship with any number of entity for example one student can enroll to any number of courses that is what one to many so one entity will going to be associated or will going to be have a relationship with any number of entity then that will be considered as what one to many and what is many to many that is n to n so n number of students can enroll to n number of courses that is what here uh, any number of student can enroll to any number of courses that is many to many so that you can see the above diagram here that is what uh, one entity will going to have n number of relationship with n number of entity so this is how one to one one to many and many to many this is regarding what binary relationship so now we'll see the further concepts that is cardinality
What do you mean by cardinality here? So that cardinality specify how many instances of an entity relate to one instances of another entity. How it represents how many instances of an entity related to one instance of another entity. For example, if we have a 60 student in a class at that time, if one student get up and if he asks 60 questions, so he need to ask a question from first student up to 60 student by leaving him. So, in the same way, second student will going to get up and he is going to ask the question to all other 59 students. See here also, leaving one, he is going to ask a question to all other 59 students. Same thing will going to be applied to all the 60 students. That means what? We are comparing or we are combining or we are specifying how many instances of an entity related to one instances of another entity. For example, if you consider this as an entity and uh, if you consider this more as one more entity. So, how many entities of here? So, this will going to be related to how many uh, instances of one entity will going to be related to one instance of another entity. That means we are checking for the maximum number of matches from one entity to another entity. For example, I will take a marks of all the 60 student and I will, I am going to have set of uh, values in another entity. Then I will check all the 60 student values with other entity. I will make a comparison or uh, I will make an association between all the 60 students with one one more entity that means the cardinality in the sense we are multiplying so how the instance of one entity how the instance of how many entities will going to be related to one instance of another entity so that is what i can say this as n to one okay so it we are going to be multiplying the instances of one entity to another entity and we have one more uh, scenario called ordinality. So, in the ordinality it specifies the occurrence of a relationship and this can describe the relationship either mandatory or optional. So, for example, the student can ask uh, questions uh, to the role number 5 or he may leave him. So, that is what this relationship is either mandatory or optional. So, but in the cardinality, so it needs to be multiplied or, or it needs to be asked for the all the 59 students. That is cardinality and ordinality. If you consider the cardinality that specifies the maximum number of relationship. So, it specifies the maximum number of relationship. How one student can ask a question like uh, if you consider one student, he has a question to how many students, okay. So, here in the ordinality, so that specifies the absolute minimum number of relationship. So, he may ask only 5 students in the ordinality or he may ask only 10 students in the ordinality. But here we are checking for the maximum number of strength from one entity to another entity in the cardinality. But in the ordinality, we will be checking for the minimum number of relationship. That is the difference between cardinality as well as the ordinality. This is regarding cardinality and ordinality. We will see the next topic that is recursive relationship. When we can say a relationship is recursive in nature. So that when an entity is related with itself is known as recursive relationship. When one entity is related to itself then we will be considering that kind of entity as a recursive relationship. So in this we will be learning about the uh, two more topics that is generalization. So if I ask anybody like uh, what's your uh, result if they simply say pass. They, that means what? They got uh, 35 more than 35 in all the subject. That is what generalization. But if I ask what's your marks at the time, if they are specifying I got uh, this much of marks in Kannada, I got this much of marks in uh, English, chemistry. If they are saying like that, then that will be termed as what? Specialization. So, in this generalization, we will be just generalizing the things. For example, if you consider here, Instead of saying pigeon, sparrow or a dove, I am simply making it as a birds. If I am saying simply as a birds, together will be considered as what? Generalization. So, instead of that, if I am saying who is that person, if I am saying whether he is a student, whether he is a teacher, then that is what we are specializing. We are uh, specific to particular 
values. So that is generalization as well as specialization. So that in the generalization, a number of entities are brought together into one generalized entity, which is based on their similar characteristics. So based on the characteristics of a different entity, we are bringing all the number of entities together then we will be calling that in a single name that kind of uh, concept will be considered as what generalization so here you can see that dove is one entity sparrow is one entity pigeon is one entity all will going to have a feathers and all will going to have a class so that by making use of those characteristics by making use of those attributes then i am going to group all these three entities as a single entity that will be considered as what birds so together by uh, having all these three entities i am making one entity that is considered as what birds here that is related to generalization when it comes to the specialization it's just the opposite of generalization so in this in the specialization, a group of entities are divided into subgroup which is based on their characteristics. Based on the characteristics, we will be dividing it into further. That means we are making a subgroup among the main group. So if I consider a person, what he can be, either he can be a student or he can be a teacher, I can have one more entity called, he can be an employee, right? So he can be a employee that means we are further dividing the given entity which is based on their characteristics so even student can have id employee can have id and teacher can also have id and also everybody will going to have their own name and their mobile number along with the date of birth by having all those features are a characteristics we are further dividing it into number of entities that type of uh, concept will be termed as specialization and this specialization is a top down approach and this generalization is a bottom up approach bottom up approach so if uh, instead of specifying that as an account so if i'm simply saying what uh, this will be saving account this will be current account so these are the two types of account so instead of uh, specifying it differently like saving or uh, current account i'm simply saying this as an account so then that will be considered as what we are grouping it as one entity with the help of uh, one or more different entity. So I will uh, just uh, specify or I will just generalize it as an account instead of saying that as a saving account or a current account. But in the case of specialization, if I say an account, then that will going to be divided into number of account, whether it is a current account, saving account, whether it is a salary account, student account, joint account, in that manner, we will be uh, describing or we are going to divide that particular entity into number of other entity which is based on their similar characteristics that is regarding generalization as well as specialization we'll see the last topic that is aggregation so here what do you mean by aggregation or aggregation so it is a process when relation between two entities is treated as a single entity so if you are having a, a three entity you consider we have a three entity at the time i am going to group two entities as a single entity and i will build a relationship between that single entity which is group of two entities and one more leftover entity so then we are going to call that as a aggregation let me take one example to make you understand regarding this aggregation consider here i have one center center is an entity here and that will going to uh, offer some of the courses okay so what is the relationship here one to one or one to many so one single center will going to offer many courses here so offer is the relationship between center and courses so i have one visitor visitor is the another entity visitor is the another entity so in the aggregation what i am doing instead of considering this center as a different entity and instead of consider this uh, course as another entity i will combine these two as a single entity whether he wanted to uh, visiting for in order to visit the center or whether he is coming to enquire the uh, enquire about the courses so this visitor entity will going to be related to both the center and course so they need to enquire 
So let me consider that as a one more relationship that is n square. So at that time I am instead of considering the center and course as a different entity I will be considering this as a aggregation of those two. So that is the a use of having this aggregation so that here uh, center one center will going to offer any number of courses and at a time any number of visitor can visit to this center in order to uh, offer or in order to inquire about the courses. This is related to what aggregation specialization as well as generalization. I hope you all understood. Let me meet you in the next session with a continuation of this chapter only. Until that, you all keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.